Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking? Henniger Draft Lager. Mm. It's a uh, Moosehead clone. For any horror finishiato, you should know where that comes from. Mm. Or are you just Canadian? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both of them work, yeah. <laughs> to keep in theme of Season 5, today we are doing 1974's The Devil Times 5. That's right. Also known as People Toys. Also <laughs> known as... The Horrible House on the Hill. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. The movie was directed by Sean McGregor and David Sheldon. David Sheldon actually produced two horror movies, Grizzly and Just Before Dawn. Yeah, which we covered. Click the link above. Gene Evans is in this, and he's been in tons of stuff. Sorrel Book is in this, and uh, one of his most notable roles is Boss Hogg in uh, <laughs> The Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. Leif Garrett is in this, too, just as one of the notable children. So the movie starts out with this van taking a bunch of children somewhere. We're not sure where they're going, or who they are, or, or anything. Still yeah. Still transporting all these kids. It's all sped up, all this super sped up footage <laughs> of the van. Like, the van ends up crashing in the snow. It looks as if all the adults in the van, the driver, everybody is dead. Yeah. Except for the children, they all kind of crawl out. One of the kids is that army kid, you know, yeah. and he's like, all right, I got a knife. Yeah. And it's one of those Swiss <laughs> army knives. One of the kids is dressed all dapper with a suit <laughs> on and everything. Yeah, and yeah. One has, for some reason, has taken the habit and everything from the nun, bundles up, and they just start walking. In the meantime, the two main characters, Julie and Rick, are getting together to go on a bit of a road trip to go up to, like, their winter mansion that is owned by Julie's dad, who we know as Papa Doc. They drive up and they meet Papa Doc at this kind of lodge bar type place, which looks awesome. Yeah. Like, I'd want to hang out there. It's got this big fireplace. Along with Papa Doc, He's got his young wife. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a trophy wife yeah. almost. Business associate Beckman and his piss tank lush <laughs> of a wife. The kids have walked up to this mansion and they're being followed by one of the survivors from the crash. They break into the wine cellar. Fuck, they start getting ready. Yeah, they, they start getting the tools, the pitchfork. This man who's been following them from the crash finally gets to this wine cellar. Suddenly it gets all slow motion. It gets like black and white and you take this pitchfork. <laughs> this guy's back. He goes down. <laughs> Grab these chains. And <laughs> They're all they all kick him in the <laughs> stomach when he's down. <laughs> and those those axe handles <laughs> that they do. <laughs> get a grip on the ground to try to get up, and you see this hammer. <laughs> those fucking chains yeah. get me though. Yeah. <laughs> they just and take then... this guy to town. <laughs> And they keep going, yeah, too, like. Super long. <laughs> so Papa Doc and his wife and the two other couples finally get back to the mansion. They kind of have this caretaker guy, Ralph, who looks after the place. She starts seducing this poor guy. He's <laughs> slow. He's not quite right. Yeah. Taking advantage of this poor guy, Papa Doc's daughter comes in and, like, confronts her. Like, what are you doing taking advantage of this poor guy? And they get this cat fight, yeah, like, nee, nee. and they're all it's rolling around. And it's horrible. It's not <laughs> very good. It's like you can tell they're trying really hard not to hurt themselves or each other. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of very it's, gingerly. Uh, uh. Papa Doc isn't cutting the mustard here, really, if uh, his wife is all trying to screw the farmhand, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. His money may be good enough, but his wang isn't. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ruth kind of gets freaked out and she's like there's kids in here and Papa Doc he all comes out he's like what the hell are you talking about but no there's all the kids are inside the house and so they have to kind of start looking after them Papa Doc again he's all pissed off goddamn generator Ralph I told you to go fix that the kids meanwhile have rigged up 
this kind of snare around <laughs> the generator. When Ralph comes in and he goes to start it up, the snare goes around his neck and actually lifts him up and hangs him. Yeah. They automatically think that he killed himself. Something's happened to the car. It won't start. Yeah. So Rick kind of starts to suspect that these kids are up to no good. I'll go chop the wood, but not because he asked me to. It's yeah. because I wanna. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes out and chops wood, and David helps him, teasing him a little bit. Oh, no, uh, you just can't do it, boy. Yeah. I'll get another log for you. <laughs> and right away it goes to slow motion, so you know something's gonna happen. <laughs> Chops him right in the back of the head. Another lame, bald <laughs> asshole to get killed by an axe. In the meantime, Lovely is kind of trying to relax. Sister Hannah comes in with another one of the girls, yeah. and they push her underneath. Papa Doc likes to keep piranhas, his prized piranhas. <laughs> They take these piranhas and then dump them in the tub and they start eating Lovely alive. Papa Doc looks out the window and he sees the kids dragging Lovely's corpse through the snow. Yeah. It's like, I knew it, you little bastard! It's the, it's the kids! It's the goddamn kids! He goes to chase down the kids. One of the kids is like in this swing with a knife sticking out of it. And it's all in slow motion again. Comes down and just takes out Papa Doc. <laughs> Ruth, she's distraught about what's been going on, right? Plus she's drunk and they end up dumping gas on her and lighting her on fire. Probably the alcohol in her system doesn't help <laughs> either. <laughs> So Rick and Julie are kind of locked in the house. Kids are outside, They're almost, it's almost like a siege. And that's where we're gonna end it. So this movie is very unique. It kind of starts off uh, not so great. And it's a tad cheesy. It's a little cheesy, a little cheap. That cat fight happens, it's yeah. very bad. It's like, oh man. And then that first kill. I was howling, <laughs> I was crying with laughter. It was so good. And th at that point on, I'm like, this movie's got me hooked. Yep. I'm in for something a little special. <laughs> and this movie is a little special. There's something very special about this movie and it's got a lot of good things going for it. It's rare that you see kids being like this. Yeah. Just evil to the core. In the 70s, you know, evil murderous children either like possessed by the devil yeah. or they're Satan's son or something like that. They're not just inherently evil. These kids too on top of it, they're fucking ingenuitive. They're man. smart. Planning ahead. Mm -hmm. they, they know what their end game is going to be. They're playing these adults like chess pawns. And there's that scene where David's playing chess with Beckman. Yeah. It, it, that's the movie, exactly. It almost seems like everything to do with the adults is sort of useless or throwaway, right? But it's not. It's set up to show that these adults are so concerned about their own worlds. That they fail to see what these fucking kids are up to. All the drama and all the tension between these adults is what's their downfall, right? Exactly. It's almost kind of obvious, yeah. right, to the outside, Yeah. but they, they don't see it. The comedy in this movie is so subtle. Like, it doesn't overshadow anything, which is... It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Workout scene where lame-ass Beckman's in that workout outfit, yeah. and he's trying to work out, but he's all fat and <laughs> shitty. And then after Papa Doc dies, and the, the kids build a snowman out of Papa <laughs> Doc, and they're all, like, throwing <laughs> snowballs at his corpse. It's like it's pretty comedic, right? Tension in this movie is really good, like because as you mentioned before, between the characters, it's tense. Yeah. But also like waiting for like, what are the kids gonna do next? Like <laughs> you know they're planning something, and that's really what this movie is. Like when are those kids gonna make their next move? I love the character building of the kids. They even kind of act almost adult. I really like that dynamic that they they pull out of the the characters. The kids are creepy. Like, yeah. David is creepy because he acts, like you said, so adult. It's off-putting. That one scene where he's dressing like a girl, too? Yeah. He's wearing that wig? Yeah. Sister Hannah, the, the nun, who is very creepy. She's like super pale. Mm -hmm. She's got those big sunglasses on all the time and mm -hmm. quiet. Put it this way, if those kids show up in my house asking for shelter, I may go... No. Yeah, it's like you can freeze outside. <laughs> Let me think about it. Just close yeah. the door and lock yeah. it. One of the great things about this movie is the fucking ending. Yeah, it's so dark. There's nothing happy about yeah. it. <laughs> A troubled movie for the production end of it, right? The director who started it 
fired them because all of the footage was deemed useless. <laughs> so, you know, the uncredited director actually finished it. Yeah. The weird rumors like the girl who played Sister Hannah was actually the original director's underage girlfriend at the time. Right, yeah, it's all weird. It's all kind of weird, <laughs> you know. Seedy it's shit seedy going stuff on. happening behind the scenes in this movie, which you kind of almost see. But that might be testament to the actors, though, yeah. how good they are, that make you feel uncomfortable, right? Apparently the actors said they had a blast filming this. They felt like they are on vacation. You get that sense, kind of, that yeah. everybody's enjoying themselves yeah. while they're yeah. dying in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> since I've watched it the first time, thought about a lot because there's a lot going on. It kind of gets the wheels spinning a bit. It even might take two watches to really get everything, right? Yeah. If you haven't seen The Devil Times Five or People Toys <laughs> or The Horrible House on the Hill, I urge you to check it out. So until next time, keep drinking in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs>